I got to hit you up, even though it's been a while, and because of the news cycle being so fast and furious, this seems probably like it was uh, six months ago for you that Brian Kelly was hired. But that whole thing and the way it went down, you know, we had a situation where I cannot think in college football history where a coach had gone voluntarily from blue blood to blue blood, and we had that with two guys in the span of like three days with Lincoln Riley and Brian Kelly. Yeah. So how surprised were you for being a guy that's in the know and as close to the program as anybody? How surprised were you? Well, you know, the only other one that I remember, too, was if you remember when Dennis Francione left Alabama for Texas A&M. You know, that's been about 20 years or so. But, yeah. but you're right. It's, it's rare. I mean, it is really rare for that to happen. Um, so, uh, I mean, Mark, early in the process, uh, I heard Brian Kelly's name. And as a matter of fact, uh, LSU's five-star quarterback signee, Walker Howard, um, the only other school that he, he visited was, was Notre Dame. And you might remember Walker's dad, Jamie Howard, who played at LSU in the 90s. Um, yeah, I, I know Jamie pretty well. And Jamie came on the show, and he, and he said point blank that when he was up in South Bend, uh, when they went late October for a visit, he asked Brian Kelly, point blank, are you considering the LSU job? And Brian Kelly told him, well, they called, and you know, I thought about it and vetted a little bit, but I'm staying here. So actually, to the point, in October, um, we kind of knew that LSU had made contact. There was interest in Brian Kelly. Um, the fact that they kept it quiet until they got across the finish line was very surprising, though. And uh, I think it was well played by Scott Woodward, who you know, his, his MO as an athletic director is, is going big game hunting. You know, I mean, from he, he hired Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M. He went and got Chris Peterson out of Boise, got him to the University of Washington. Um, hired Kim Mulkey at, at LSU. I mean, the he, he does not aim small. And uh, I, we all knew that he was going to aim big with this hire. And I think he landed a he landed a big fish, you know, the winningest active coach in college football who uh, really just has one box left to check on his resume, and that's to win a national championship. Now, Matt, uh, I'm not even going to – venture to go into the whole debacle concerning the 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 video that went viral and in in the southern draw and all of that even before that it just struck me and i was not alone as an interesting we'll say cultural fit brian kelly lsu well ed ogeron would have been a perfect cultural fit and he was a disaster uh johnny jones was a perfect fit at lsu as a basketball coach and he was a disaster I'll tell you the three winningest coaches in the history of LSU athletics are Skip Ertman, who was a Jewish man from Detroit, who grew who was born in Detroit, grew up in Miami, and came to heavily Roman Catholic South Louisiana, won five baseball national titles, still lives here. Dale Brown, who's from Minot, North Dakota, who is the second winningest coach behind Adolph Rupp in the history of SEC basketball, he still lives here. And then Nick Saban, who's uh, born in West Virginia and a Midwesterner. Um, it doesn't matter if you're from here, man. It, it doesn't. It's it's an overplayed storyline. If you win, people here will embrace you, as is, is the case in most places. Um, and Brian Kelly has been a winner everywhere he's been. And the thing he's done that I think is um, is pretty self-aware, because, look, he, he uprooted everything within this program. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, the on not just the on-field staff, but support staff, analysts, recruiting staff, all the way down to the people that answer the phones in football ops, Mark. I mean, it is. They uprooted everything. But what he has done is been self-aware enough to know that in this state for recruiting purposes, you have to have people that are respected within the high school coaching community to open doors. And the thing he did immediately was address that with his staff. And it's no coincidence. I'm sure we'll talk about the transfers that LSU's landed, but all seven transfer, well, five of the seven that LSU has landed have been guys that played high school football in Louisiana or were playing college football in Louisiana and transferred into LSU now. Because it, it does matter here. And and he's self-aware enough to know that. And he brought people onto the staff who sort of filled that gap where he was maybe deficient. 